So there's where they are. See, this is like a temperature controlled heating pad. And then they're still like in, alive. yeah, still alive. That's like a a blanket intended for puppies, but it works for them. We just fold it in half. It's very soft and warm. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we put it in the little napkin. Oh, that's it. Yeah, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. Oh yeah, there he is. Not very clear, but anyway, he's so tiny. So, they are completely pink. It's like one day. Yeah, I don't know what happened to their mom. Yeah. You want to drink a little bit? This one's still sleeping. Uh-oh. Mm. Because he wants to pick. Yeah, you have a little okay. paintbrush Brush. to kind of paint the milk on their lips. Mm. Oh, this one's sucking a little bit. Is he eating? Mm. Oh. Oh, I, did he eat? It seems like the milk disappeared. Really, really hard to do. Okay, now you start to drink it. Up. Uh, Look, it is hard. Yes. Some just don't want to drink so much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you can see the mouth is slowly. Yeah. Well, we do what we can, but they're so tiny that they, you know, if they were bigger. It would be a lot easier to feed them. And as it is, um, it's really a question how many will survive. Because, hmm. see, at this age, they're supposed to be getting some antibodies and stuff from their mom and her milk, which obviously this artificial milk cannot provide. So they could be more susceptible to, you know, uh, getting disease or something. Which means that some, hopefully some of them will live. We actually got, I don't know, how many was it? Like seven or quite a lot, you know. And, oh, and it's tricky. Yeah. And this litter. Just got them last night. I already tried to feed them two times. Um, once at uh, about like 10 or so, and the other time at 1 a.m. <coughs> I fed them at 1 a.m. And when I finally went to sleep, it was 3 a.m. So I'm not as good at feeding these guys as she is um, because uh, Chong used to make heart valves and stuff, so he's really good at working with little tiny things. <laughs> so... Basically, uh, she's kind of the, the pro at this. So, yeah, I mean, normally when they're bigger, <coughs> oh, okay, we would actually feed them, you know, we have a, like a little syringe with a nipple. Um, it's called a uh, miracle nipple. And the syringe can hold uh, half an ml. Uh, but these guys are so tiny that even that's too big for them. So we literally have to just use a paintbrush and try to, you have to very accurately position the milk also because if you get the milk on their nose, you know, it, they'll aspirate it and that's, you know, that's the end for that baby. I mean, obviously, if they were feeding from their mom, they would never have any problem like that because they have an instinct that if uh, something like a nipple presses up to their lips they, uh, they open their mouth and they start sucking on it and you can kind of simulate that where some of these babies if you're really having trouble getting them to eat 
you can actually put some milk on their lips and then put your finger on, on their lips and then they will open their mouth and s hopefully suck the milk off your finger. Uh, that's uh, That worked for me a few times last night. Um, and I guess by kind of stroking and pressing on, her, on the lips with the paintbrush, we try to get that same effect to some extent. Um, but obviously the, the temperature and, and the, the feel and everything is not quite right, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you can see every so often he is eating, but it's a, it's a difficult process. And trying to do it with your finger has its own, you know, problems because, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a danger when you put your finger there. You might accidentally get some of the milk into their nose, um, you know, and, and they, some of them, you know, still react fearfully and try to, uh, you know, try to avoid your finger and stuff like that. I mean, you can even see he, to some extent, is, is bulking a little bit at having the milk put on his lips like that because it's so unnatural. This is not how you know, he's supposed to be fed, he knows that. So, he doesn't understand that we're trying to help him. Um, maybe it's, he's scared, maybe it feels cold. Uh, maybe the, the bristles might be a little bit scratchy or something. So, and there he goes, he's basically, mm -hmm. he's telling us, uh, I'm not liking this. You know. And, um, uh, I mean, kind of, yeah, now we're going to try to wipe his butt with a uh, wet uh, piece of tissue to s stimulate uh, uh, urination and defecation. And this is also very important because at this age they, they, don't, they don't do that on their own. Their mom really has to do that for them. And the reason is, is because when they're in the, uh, you know, the, the hidey hole, the den uh, uh, that the mom makes for them. Um, actually, the mom, you know, it would be, it's, it's actually dangerous for them to leave a lot of feces and urine. It's, it's not hygienic. And also creates a lot of odor that maybe predators can, can locate the burrow. So uh, nature has basically he in just made a little bit pee. Yeah, he did good job. Yeah, bit, yeah. yeah they've made these animals instinctively withhold their, you know, their urine and stuff until the mom is ready for them, and she licks it off, goes into her tummy. It's recycled a little bit, you know. At least. Ah, uh, this one's done. Yeah, and uh, and it it's not any place. So there's how many others are in there? Three done already. Oh wow, great. I can't really see them, but yeah, yeah. where are they? Yeah? In the corner. Oh, there they are. Oh, sorry. What a dummy I am. <laughs> yep, there they are. Okay.